This is Gerhard from Leicester de Montfort University in the UK. I'm speaking to Lena Stempel, uh, who is in Ghana and who uh, is uh, an environmental protectionist, <laughs> uh, looking after turtles and many other things. <laughs> Lena, tell me first of all, how did you come <laughs> to see you to Ghana altogether? Um, yeah, so it's a long story, but I kind of had a break in between uh, um, my undergrad program and going into graduate school. And my school had a lot of talks about um, from Fulbright scholars, and so they kind of encouraged me to apply. And I thought it was a great way to be able to learn a lot and do some research and traveling. And um, I had just been to South Africa, and so I was kind of, you know, had Africa fever and I wanted to see more. And one of my professors that I was talking to about potentially going to grad school with him, I, um, I remember that he did sea turtle work in Ghana. And so I, he kind of connected me to everything here, and I'm working with him um, a little bit on the project here. And so it just worked out really well. We both had similar interests and so now I work with one of his affiliates at the wildlife division here. And he's gotten me in touch with the fisheries commission and with other professors here as well. Fantastic. That sounds really adventurous. Now, uh, as you probably have seen on my blog, <laughs> I'm much concerned about plastic pollution. Now, what's the situation in Ghana? How, how much are they using plastic? Are they aware of what that plastic does? And uh, how does it impact the ocean? Yeah, it's um, it's a really big problem here. But I think I think some people are aware that it's a problem, and some people are not. But it's in different contexts than maybe we see. You know, we see the problem differently. They see the problem as it clogs the gutters, and so then mosquitoes breed in the gutters and cause malaria or cholera breeds in the gutters because the gutters can't flow because of all the garbage. Um, I don't think people see it as the same way that we do. Um, but since water isn't really safe here, everyone uses um, water sachets, little plastic bags of water or water bottles and soda bottles and everything. And there's no recycling at all. Um, not even, you know, a small amount. There's just no infrastructure for it. Um, and so it's everywhere. There's not really a good landfill system also. And so trash is burned on the streets everywhere. There's small like little piles that then there's trash fires like every morning with the plastic in it, with everything in it. Um, and a lot of it also ends up on the beach. And sometimes they bury it on the beach, but then, you know, the ocean comes up and uncovers the plastic. <laughs> and then, so it's just, uh, it's not a very good system. Um, and when you swim in a lot of places, you get plastic bags wrapped around your ankles all the time. Like, you know, a half an hour in the ocean, you have like 20 plastic bags that come and touch your legs. And so it's hard to enjoy it because you're just gathering all the trash. Um, and I work the sea turtle nesting. I work in a protected area also, and the sea turtles are nesting in the plastic, and it's so sad. It's really awful. And with the the fisheries also, when they pull in a net, um, a seine net or a gill net or anything, half of the catch is plastic. Literally half of it is plastic trash. So it's just everywhere. What about schools? Is there any education uh, of environmental education in schools at all? No. So I um, teach for an NGO, uh, environmental science, but in the normal Ghana curriculum, there's not really environmental science. They have like, I forget what they call it. They have like biology and basic things like that, but not really... Uh, much talk about environmental issues. Sometimes there's talk about sanitation um, in other classes, uh, but it's not the focus, and it's more of 
like the health aspect, you know, like don't throw your trash or your food in the gutter because then your neighbor could get sick. Um, but that's a very small part of just maybe one class or something. And it's, yeah, it, there's definitely not the focus. So that's why I have my environmental class that's kind of informal. Um, so people don't have to go, but it's an option in an area where uh, some of the kids don't go to school either. And so it's nice to get to talk about topics that aren't normally taught in the schools. But yeah, I've looked there's I found one environmental textbook here and I looked at it and it was it was not environmental science. It was like about malaria and a little bit of cholera, so that was good, but it was about not environmental issues. It talked about food and malaria mostly and I was like, I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are the people in Ghana at all environmental conscious? Um, there are some things that are different and good, you know. I'm not sure if it's because of the people or not, but, you know, there are glass soda bottles, and instead of being recycled, they're refilled by, like, Coke and Pepsi um, plants and one other local plant and some beer bottles are also but no there's not really the same respect for the environment or or animals or nature um it's more of you know short-term thinking like how does my family survive now like how do we get enough money for food and for clean water so there's not really the long-term thinking of okay we're destroying our environment and our air by burning plastic and using all the plastic and It's just not really a thought of, from most people. Uh, can you tell us a bit more on the condition of the beaches? Can you say that again? The beach, uh, the seaside, uh, how much plastic is there and are people, I mean you said they're burying it, yes, but uh, how much Is it a lot of plastic at the beach? Yeah, it depends on where you are. There are a few places that they, the there's one trash company and they clean the beaches sometimes, but they clean it and they're, they also just bury the trash on the beach when they clean it or they burn it. And so then when the beaches aren't cleaned, then They put, like, local people maybe make a few trash piles along the beach, and then there's just trash, you know, that washes the shore from other parts of um, West Africa. And then, depending, you know, if you go to areas that aren't as many tourists, um, there's literally walls of trash. There was a beach that I walked to where there was a wall, like, 12 feet tall of um just like old clothes and old plastic mixed together. It was just like a cliff right on the beach. Um, and then I kept walking for about 40 minutes and there was literally the whole sand was like a landfill and parts of it were on fire. It was just the most disturbing thing that I'd ever seen. It was going into the water, it was on fire and it was just everywhere. And there was so much of it, it was terrible. Um, And even in um, Accra, the capital, the beaches are terrible. You can't, you don't want to go into the water because there's so much trash and plastic in the water and on the beaches. Um, but as there are less people, if you go further away from the capital, there are some beaches that are pretty clean, but it depends on how many people are living there and if they can afford to have their trash be taken to a sort of landfill or if they use the beach as a landfill. So it just depends on where you are in Ghana also. Now, how does that plastic trash impact the wildlife, in particular the turtles? So that is your field, I believe so. Yeah, I think it has a really big impact. I think um, the main impact is, is when it's in the water, especially because there are so many bags from the drinking water and from um, bag usage here for like when you buy food or anything. People use a lot of bags. 
Uh, and so turtles, especially the leatherbacks that are here, they see the, the bags in the water and they're, a lot of them are see-through. And so then they see them and it looks kind of like a jellyfish. And so then they eat them um, and their stomachs get full with plastic. And then they basically starve because their stomachs are full of plastic and not food. And I think that's probably a big part of why they're declining so badly here. Um, there's a lot of other reasons like the degradation of nesting habitat and being caught in fishing nets and drowning. Um, but I think the plastic is a big problem because, you know, the adults eat the plastic and, the you know, the whole life cycle, they eat the plastic. And so if they're just babies when they hatch on the shores here, if they eat plastic, then they only need a few pieces to die. And so the whole life cycle is affected, you know, adults are dying, hatchlings are dying, all the different age groups that are here are dying and declining a lot. Um, and then some of, the, some of the hatchlings may get, if they are hatched on a beach that's covered in trash, they may get caught in the, and killed on their way to the ocean. So they may never even make it into the ocean because, you know, to a small turtle this big, a pile of trash is a huge mountain and there it's a lot easier to get tangled in that than you know a pile of sand they can just climb over the pile of sand but if there's plastic bags and wrappers and everything then they can't get through it they might get tangled in or it's hard to climb so we've seen that too uh where they don't make it to the ocean because of the trash now what difference are you hoping to make with your presence in Ghana. I believe you will be six or nine months you will be staying here? Yeah. Yeah, I'm um, here for nine months. Um, the Fulbright is kind of a, it's a very broad program. And so it's about culture as well as science and research and everything. So I have a lot of different kind of goals. Um, one of them is to, you know, educate locals about sea turtles. And so I do that in two ways, uh, or I guess two or three ways. So I have my weekly class where I talk about uh, turtles and environmental issues, just so people are more aware of how their lives impact the environment and um, how that impacts their sanitation and everything and health. And then also then I go to some of the students that I've met here also, I go to their schools with them and um, do small programs on turtles. And then the wildlife division also has programs in the communities where we show documentaries. We go and talk about turtles. We go and talk about trash and rubbish being thrown on the beach. And uh, we will go to some schools also. So that's the three ways I do education. Um, my main research project is on how to reduce sea turtles from getting caught in gill nets in Ghana because gill nets are used um, very frequently. There's maybe 90 or so boats that use gill nets on and off throughout the year um, just on the one beach that I'm working at here in Winneba. It's a big fishing community. Um, so I'm trying to see if using green LED lights on the gill nets uh, makes the sea turtles see the nets and so they swim away from the net. So I have 15 boats that I work with that have the LED lights on them and 15 boats that don't have the, the LED lights on them. And so I record fish cats for them and sea turtle cats for them uh, and the different types of sea turtles they catch too. So I'm hoping that if, it, if the project works out the way that I want it to, the green lights uh, make turtles not get caught in the nets so they're not killed um, and they don't drown from the nets. And it doesn't impact fish catch, but we'll see how that goes. It's still really hard to tell, you know, with all the data. Um, and then I'm also writing up some some papers on that and on um, other data that the wildlife division here has from sea turtle nesting, um, just to spread the word about what we know about the sea turtle decline here in Ghana, because there's not a lot of sea turtle research in West Africa. So we need to kind of communicate the data that we're finding. Mm. And yeah, yeah. Other the other stuff is more cultural, just to learn more about um, culture here in different parts of Ghana and share share my culture. Okay, one last question: What are your future plans? Mm -hmm. 
What are your plans for the future? Um, so yeah. when I come back, uh, I come back. And... What? Sorry. Um, so I come back in May and in August. Then I start my PhD at University of Miami um, in integrative biology. So I plan to do work on um, herpetology and conservation. So the conservation of reptiles and amphibians. So I kind of want to help bridge a gap between, you know, science and education and lawmaking in the future. So I'm not sure exactly where that will take me, but I definitely know that I want to continue working on projects and publishing them and sharing them with land managers so that it's communicated, you know, it's not just communicated with scientists, it's communicated with the public and with um, people who manage the lands, who manage the coasts and manage the forests and things like that. Um, so I'm going to get my PhD and see where that goes, maybe have a postdoc or two um, after that. And I plan to eventually become a professor, but um, I never know. We'll see what the, what the PhD makes me feel. <laughs> okay, thank you, Lena. That is all for today. Thank you very much for talking to us and I wish mm -hmm. you um, all the best in your stay in Ghana and you have a lots of wonderful experience. Certainly you have some nice warm weather, sir. Unlike the UK, yep. it is freezing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. It's so nice to meet you. It's definitely very hot here, so I'm going to the beach later, but <laughs> all right. Nice to talk to you. Nice to talk to you. Thank you.